This is Mrs. Appiah with Lesson 6, Fluency with Percents. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students solve various types of percent problems by identifying the type of percent problem and applying appropriate strategies. Students extend mental math practices to mentally calculate the part, the percent, or the whole in the percent word problems. The essential question is, when faced with a percent problem, how do you determine whether to use mental math or write and solve an equation? Corey and Everett have collected model cars since third grade. Corey has 80 model cars in his collection, which is 25% more than Everett has. How many model cars does Everett have? So we're going to go ahead and solve this problem without using an equation. And it says to use mental math. When you use mental math, it's not a bad idea to draw a diagram to help you understand the problem. So what I know is that Quarry has 80 cars, and that's more than Everett has. So I'm going to start by making a bar for Quarry, and at the end of it, I'm going to write 80 cars. And that is the number of cars that Quarry has. Now, Everett has fewer cars, so I'm going to draw the bar less. And I'm going to put his name here at the bottom. And it's 25% more than Everett has. So when you're comparing it to something, what you're comparing it to is the whole. So Everett is the whole in this case. The whole is associated with 100%. So the number of Everett's cars would be right here. And that would be 100%. Then it says that Corey has 25% more. So this section right here represents 25%. So right here, that would be 125% at the end of Corey's bar. What I can do next is I can divide Corey's bar into groups of 25% because a common factor between 100 and 125 is 25. So I'm going to divide Corey's bar and Everett's bar into groups of 25%. So this would be the 50% mark. This would be the 25% mark. And this would be the 75% mark. What I can do next is I can take the car cars that Corey has, which is 80 cars, and I can split it between these five sections to find out how many cars would go in each section. So 80 divided by five sections is 16. That means that 16 cars go in each section. And 25% of the collection is 16 cars. Then Everett has four of those sections that have 16 cars in them. So 16 times 4 is Everett's total of 60 cars. So now we know that Everett has 64 cars in his collection. Mental math and percents example 1. 75% of the students in Jessie's class are 60 inches or taller. If there are 20 students in her class, how many students are 60 inches or taller? I'm going to solve this problem a little differently. So I know that there are 20 students in her class, and 75% of them are 60 inches or taller. So if I take the 20 students and I put them into groups of 25%, I want to know what 25% of 20 is. The reason I'm using 25% is that I know that I can multiply that answer by 3, and it will give me 75% total. So 25% of 20, well, that would be 1 fourth, and 1 fourth of 20 is 5. What that means is that 5 students represents 25%. And we know that there are 75%, and that would be times 3, and then I multiply my students times 3 as well, and that would give me 15 students. So while 1 fourth of the students is 5 students, 2 fourths of the students would be 10 students, 3 fourths of the students would be 15 students, and that is the 75% that we are looking for. So 15 of the students are 60 inches or taller. Next, Bobby wants to leave a tip for her waitress equal to 15% of her bill. 
Abby's bill for her lunch is $18. How much money represents 15% of the bill? For 15%, a good way to do that problem mentally is to find 10% first, then take half of that, which would be 5%, add it together, and you would get 15%. So the first step of taking 10% of 18 is $1.80. And I know that because 10% represents 0.10 and 1 tenth times 18 all you have to do is move the decimal one place to find 10 percent. Five percent would be half of that amount. Half of a dollar 80 is 90 cents. Then I add those amounts together and that gives me two dollars and 70 cents. So that represents 15 percent of the bill. Two dollars and 70 cents represents 15 percent of the bill. Number six, Lauren must obtain a minimum number of signatures on a petition before it can be submitted. She was able to obtain 672 signatures, which is 40% more than she needs. Okay, so we're comparing it to the amount that she needs, more than she needs. So what she needs is the whole. The 672, which is... Okay, that is the quantity. And remember, the quantity can be more than the whole. And then 40% more than. So 100% would be the amount she needed. And she got 40%, which is more than the 100%. So we're going to go ahead and use our percent equation. Quantity equals percent times whole. The quantity is the 672 signatures. The 100% plus the 40% is the amount of signatures she obtained. And the whole is the amount she needed to obtain. So we add this together and we get 140%. Remember in the equation to write it as a decimal. The decimal is 1.4 times W for whole. So here we have an equation that we can solve to find the answer to our problem. Divide by the coefficient 1.4. A number divided by itself equals 1 and that leaves us with W and then 672 divided by 1.4 will give us our answer. And the answer is 480 signatures. So I did not solve this problem mentally, rather I solved it with an equation. The essential question in the, for part of this lesson was how do you know when to use mental math? You can use mental math for benchmark amounts such as one half or one fourth or one third or figures that you are familiar with or problems that you can reason through. But if it's not a problem that you can reason through, then feel free to use another strategy, such as drawing a diagram or writing an equation. You can mentally calculate the part, the percent, or the whole in a percent word problem, or you can use the percent formula. Quantity equals percent times whole.